Okay. Is anybody waiting around for the Shape It Up Live show? Go ahead and enter the comments if you are there. I am just doing a couple little stuff in the background. We're going to wait till noon to get started. But if you are hanging out, welcome to the Shape It Up Live show. Um, today we are chatting about why you don't do what you say you want to do. And I am going to, we're actually going live on Facebook and YouTube. So we'll see how this goes. I am going to be looking at both the cameras. So, um, so I'm not ignoring anybody. Oh, somebody just popped on. Come say hi, whoever came on. Kim! <laughs> Hi, Kim. All right, so we're going to just wait one more minute, and then we're going to dive into the topic at the top of the hour. Hi, Diane. I see you on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, long, long time no talk, Kim. <laughs> uh. All right. Oh, it is officially noon. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. So if you can hear me, oh, Diane, don't don't click any buttons. I see you're driving to work. So if you can hear me, just click that like button. Hi, Patty. <laughs> so if everybody can hear me, just click that like button. If you're new to live video, um, usually down on the bottom, there's a thumbs up. And um, it basically gives you option. There's a thumbs up. It gives you an option to click on an emoji. So if you click that button, you can choose which one you would like. Hopefully, it's not the angry emoji. All right. So today on the Shape It Up video, I'm going to be talking about why you don't do what you say you want to do. Um, I'm also going to give you nine tips at the end of the video to help you get started on what you say you want to accomplish. So hang out for the end. So if we have never met before, my name is Nicole Simonin, and I am a personal trainer with a background in physical therapy and a former professional ballet dancer. Oh, <laughs> are you killing me with emojis? <laughs> I know that's you, Kim. So anyway, <laughs> um, so I help women over 40 get fit and feel more comfortable in their own skin. If you would like to learn more about Shape It Up, go ahead and head to shapeitupfitness.com for more information. I also want to let you know, too, if you have any comments, feel free to put them in the comment section as I'm talking. Um, if you've ever been on this end of a live show, the comments keep coming and scrolling, but sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. So go ahead and put any comments that you have in, and then at the end, I'll scroll back up and um, go through them as well. All right, so we are talking about why you don't do what you say you do. All right, so if I said, hey, I will pick you up from the airport when you land. And say you've landed and you're waiting for me and you keep waiting for me and I'm not there. I do not call. I do not text you. I don't even call later. Nothing has happened to me. There is no car wreck. There is no reason other than that I changed my mind and thought it was too much work for me to come get you. Didn't bother to call or text because, well, you know, I just didn't want to hear what you had to say. So what is your opinion of me? Do you think that I'll be the first person you call when you need another ride from the airport or for anything for that matter? Probably not. So now what if I said to you, I'm going to pick you up at the airport and not only did I show up, but I was early and on time and was ready to help you with your bags. What do you think of me now? You probably, I'm the first person you're going to call when you need a ride from the airport because I agreed to pick you up and I did what I said I was going to do. So which version are you? When you say you're going to pick up somebody from the airport, do you show up or do you not? And how is this different from the promises that you make to yourself? So if you tell yourself, I am not going to overeat tonight when I go out to dinner, do you honor that commitment to yourself? So how many of you have to-do lists? Click that like button if you have a to-do list. And I would love to know how long your to-do list is. Is it like five things? Is it three pages? 
Um, so if you were to look at that to-do list, and when I say to-do list, not just what you're doing for the week, but like what do you want to do in life? What would life be like if you completed everything on that list? What would life be like if you completed everything that you said you were going to do? Seriously, take a second and think about this. Because if we did everything that we said we were going to do, you'd probably be amazed at your life. So maybe you have a bucket list. Maybe you want to go skydiving. Or maybe it's something really small like you want to just organize the drawer in your kitchen. So why haven't you done this? So here are some reasons why it might not have happened yet. So number one, maybe your goal is too big in the time frame that you've given. So I am all for big goals, so don't get me wrong on this. But if you have a big goal, you need to kind of chunk it down into smaller goals. So maybe your goal is to lose 100 pounds. That is not going to happen in one month. It's not going to have happen in six months. It might not happen for a couple years. So you gotta be able to chunk that goal down into bite-sized pieces. Number two, maybe you don't actually really wanna achieve your goal. So our brain has a funny way of gravitating us towards pleasure and avoiding pain. So if you think of weight loss, if you think it's going to be very painful, guess what you are not gonna to wanna to do? <laughs> you are not gonna to wanna to lose weight. Simple as that. Your brain sometimes likes to sabotage us. Um, it's trying to keep you safe, but yeah, in the long run, it's not really helping you. So number three, your actions dictate your results. So if you'd rather dive into a bag of chips or eat a huge bowl of ice cream than go for a walk or go work out, you have made your choice very, very obvious, right? Number four, one of the reasons why you might not have had it happen yet, your goals, is you actually haven't really committed to it. Um, it might not be a top priority for you right now. So if you don't clean out your kitchen drawer, life is not going to end. The world is not going to implode. Nothing's going to happen <laughs> other than you have a messy drawer. But if you say you want to lose 50 pounds and you're still overeating on ice cream every night, losing weight is not a top priority for you. So how do we go and shift gears to completing to what you say you want to do and getting it done? So like I had mentioned earlier, your brain makes neural pathways uh, and they become habits. I am going to do a future video more on neural pathways, but for now just know that the more times that you ditch yourself, the more ingrained it becomes and the more harder it is to break. So the great news is that this works for bad habits but it works for good habits too. So the opposite is true as well. The more you honor your commitments, the more you will believe in yourself and trust in you. So here are the nine tips to do what you say you wanna do. Watch out for, but I don't wanna. The inner child that lives inside of us tends to come out and have temper tantrums. <laughs> so happens to everybody. But especially when it starts to get hard, um, we, again, gravitate towards pleasure and we try to avoid pain. So the more time you give in to that inner child and that temper tantrum that you're having, the more you're going to solidify that habit. Number two, you need to build trust back into your mind. So how many diets or exercise programs have you totally committed to and then you totally ditch them very shortly afterwards. Now, maybe that wasn't the diet or workout program that fit for you. That's another issue. But again, if you start with small steps, you're going to build more trust and integrity with yourself. Number three, you want to watch your language. No, we're not talking about curse words. <laughs> we're talking about how you talk to yourself. Do you verbally beat yourself up if you don't follow through? So I recently asked a client, what if they had met a woman who was 100 pounds overweight, and what would you say to her if you saw her overeating or not following her program? Would you say the same things that you say to yourself? You probably wouldn't. So talk to yourself with kindness. That doesn't mean you're giving yourself permission to get off the hook of whatever you said you were going to do. You're just being kind and caring. Um, sometimes it helps to think of yourself as like a child. Again, your inner child. You wouldn't, hopefully you wouldn't scream and yell at a child if they, you know, 
were overeating or, you know, fell off their program. So be kind to yourself. You really got to stop hating yourself thin. It is, doesn't, it just doesn't work. So number four, you want to show up. There are going to be days when you are just barely holding on and you need to show up for yourself. So this is where consistency comes in. Willpower goes out the window pretty quick, but when you're consistent, you're going to show up. So it's like the mom who rushes home from work to make sure that she makes her daughter's soccer game. You're, that is a priority to you, and you're solidifying that bond. Number five, do not agree to something that you know you're not going to do. Uh, if you are a brand new exercise, or do not commit to six days at the gym for two hours. It's just, you're not going to do it. There's no way. I do love big goals. Like I said in the beginning, I love big goals, but they need to be chunked down. And again, if you're new, you, you can't just throw yourself into the deep end a lot of times. You have to really kind of ramp yourself up or you're going to fall off the wagon. So maybe something doable is if you're new to working out, start with a 30-minute workout and only do it two times a week. And then when you get good at that and you've built the trust up in your brain that, yes, I can do it, then you add a third day. Um, so number six is work with a certified trainer for accountability. Your Aunt Susie is not going to keep you accountable. Um, you do not want to have somebody that's going to give you a pass, you know, somebody who's going to kind of feel sorry if you're having a bad day or what have you. There are going to be days when you are not motivated and you're going to need an outside nudge. So hiring someone gives you skin in the game and it helps you navigate through those tough times. Number seven, imagine the benefits of whatever you are committing to. So if you lose your belly fat, you will be healthier, healthier and you may live longer. If you go for daily walks in the park, you're not only getting movement, but you might be meeting some new walking friends there. Always think about what you're living, it, hence the pleasure part. So if you hate working out, which Probably most people do. <laughs> um, but you love the feeling that you get after your workout. You want to focus on that after feeling and go with that. Don't think about how hard the workout is, but focus on that great feeling that you get after your workout. So number eight, this is a big one. Priorities, okay? What matters gets done. Is the world going to end when you don't clean out that messy kitchen drawer? No. So. I know for, for me, that's been on my to-do list for probably 20 years. Who knows? <laughs> but nothing horrible has happened yet. Um, but if you just found out that if you don't lose 50 pounds and you're going to die, you bet your butt you're going to be finding the best tra personal trainer out there and the cost is not going to be an issue and you're going to be so laser focused on achieving that weight loss, you're going to be amazed at what you can do. But why do we have to wait until something horrible happens in order to make steps and changes? So number nine, stop making excuses. The biggest one I always hear is lack of time. Sorry, that is not a reason. We all have 24 hours in the day. I have tons of clients with extremely busy schedules and they fit it in. It's how you choose to spend your time. Um, it really goes back to your priorities. Priorities get done. So if you've made a commitment to yourself that you're going to lose weight to get healthier or to get stronger, are you going to pick yourself up at the airport or are you going to leave yourself there? Are you going to honor your commitments and do what you say you're going to do? All right, so it's on to Q&A time. Um, and while I'm waiting, I'm going to scroll back and see if there's any questions. I do want to invite you to join me next week on Wednesday at noon Eastern time right here. And we're going to be talking about, is your metabolism slowing down now that you are over 40? If you joined in late, you can watch the rebroadcast of this video by going to shapeitupfitness.com as well. So I'm just going to see if we have any comments. And I don't think I see. I am new to um, Facebook. So I'm sorry, not Facebook. Um, uh, what is this? YouTube. <laughs> I am new to YouTube. So I don't really see any questions. I don't see any questions. Okay. All right. So if we have no questions, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. And again, you can join me next week on um, whatever social media channel you are on right now, Facebook or YouTube. And I will be broadcasting Wednesday at noon Eastern time. And we're going to be talking about is your metabolism slowing down now that you're over 40? 
All right. Thanks again. Remember to get fit, be fierce, and I will see you next week. Take care.